on This Week in Iowa. This man could be running for president against President Trump. Then another Democrat jumps in the race against Senator Joni Ernst. Plus, how are Iowa Democrats preparing for the massive cattle call event this month? And Governor Reynolds gets firm with the president about ethanol. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. I'm Sabrina Ahmed. Well, he's been in politics since the 90s and has served in Congress and as a governor of South Carolina. Now, Mark Sanford is rumored to be launching a presidential campaign to take on President Trump in the primary. He's voted in line with the administration 89% of the time while in Congress, but opposed the president's proposals to fund relief for the opioid crisis and increase military funding on fiscal grounds. So we are joined now by Mark Sanford. Mr. Sanford, thank you so much for being here Yes, ma'am. Pleasure. Okay, so... Um, we like to ask all of these mm -hmm. presidential candidates this question. And let's be clear, I'm not a presidential candidate, but I am looking at it and going to make a call here shortly. And potential ones, yeah. yes, yeah. yes yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Usually, though, we've been talking to Democrats this sure. round. Um, why run? What about you thinks that you can primary President Trump? I simply believe that we need to have a conversation on what it means to be a Republican. I, I think we've lost our way on a number of different fronts. And whether I proceed with this or not, I think that conversation is important. I mean, for instance, it used to be a linchpin, I mean, absolute cornerstone to the Republican Party that we watched out for people's pocketbook or their wallet. But you look at the spending that's taking place in Washington under this administration, it's at record levels in terms of debt, deficit, and even spending. The debt deal that the president just signed adds $2 trillion of additional debt over the next 10 years and adds a third of a trillion dollars in new spending just here over the next two, two, two years. So as you consider to mull this over and make that decision, what would put you one or the other way? Well, on the, on the con side, I mean, it's a daunting project. It's huge. It's Herculean. I mean, you, you're, you're like, oh, my goodness, that's just way too big. The buddies that have suggested this for more than a year now uh, have, have suggested it based on that conversation that's needed and based on the need to have a, a conversation as Republicans on what it means to be a Republican. On the pro side, I think that conversation is indeed needed. And the way in which you, we have a conversation every four years is with the national debate. What's it mean to be a Democrat? What's it mean to be a Republican? Where do we want to go as a country? Those are the debates that we have every four years in the presidential cycle. And you are hearing this from fellow Republicans that they would like to see you jump into the race? Yeah, what's interesting, there was a poll, uh, I guess, a couple weeks ago in New Hampshire. Roughly about 80, 90 percent of the folks were supportive of the president. But then half of the respondents said, thought he ought to be primary. Thought, thought that we ought to indeed have a conversation about where we're going as a party. Um, and so, the, you know, you, you get conflicting reports. I, I went to a, a Trump rally. It was a vice president was there. Trump was not. But on Monday night, and uh, it was amazing to me the number of young people that came up and said, I, I do hope that you run, and here's why, and then go through the different reasons. So you've critiqued President Trump's f fiscal the job that he's done fiscally and um, the increasing debt mm -hmm. and the debt crisis that our country's in. But what other... We're not in a crisis yet, but I think we're walking our way toward one. And it's going to have incredible consequences for my four sons, for a lot of other kids and grandkids out there that I don't know. That, that is the, the epicenter of where I come from, simply because that's my experience. That When I walked in as governor, I inherited a billion dollar financial hole. We dealt with that. I was the first governor of the country to turn back stimulus money. I was on the budget committee when I was in Congress. I've dealt with budgets a lot, and I'm worried about where ours is headed. Are there other concerns, to your point? Yes. Yeah. I mean, for instance, on trade, I'm worried about where we're headed. I mean, it's impacting soybean farmers certainly here in Iowa, but it's also impacting the port in Charleston, where I used to represent uh, uh, on, on the coast of South Carolina. I mean, the, 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 we, we are, um, I, I think, setting ourselves up for some dangerous trends. If you look at the Smoot-Hawley tariffs of the 1930s, world trade declined by two-thirds in their wake. I think we need to be very deliberate about what we're doing on that front. If you're hearing from people who are going to Trump rallies saying that they'd like to see him primaried, do you think that that makes him vulnerable? I think that, again, if you simply ask the generic question, do you support Trump or do you want a Democrat, 90% of the Republicans have to say, I support Trump. But that's in the absence of a choice. And so when you actually begin to break it out on issues, whether it's on the way in which uh, this administration is spending money and not doing something on the debt and de deficit issue, whether it's on trade, whether it's on tone, uh, 
I think that then all of a sudden fissures begin to show up and there are cracks in the armor where people say, no, we really ought to, I, I don't like the way he handles that particular issue. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's all a matter of how you ask the question that drives that 90% number. So looking back at Helen history, can you name a president who was a Republican who you really thought was fiscally conservative and did drive down the debt or the deficit? You know, um, I, I would say that Barry Goldwater certainly tried. He didn't make it to, to be president. I think that what Jefferson talks about, if you want to go way, way back uh, uh, in terms of the limitations on government and the need to limit government, has been, again, a cornerstone to traditionally at least what Republicans talked about. Now, one thing that is um, a personal issue that yeah. you've dealt with in your past is you did you, you disappeared for four days, you had an extramarital affair. That is all in the past, but yeah. do you believe that that is someone who should be representing our country on a global scale? Would you ask that of the president? I have. Um, and what would you say? What would I say? Yeah. Well, it's not my job to answer that question. No, no, it's no, yours. no, 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 no. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm, I'm just turning around on you, which is to say, the president's done things that are wrong. He said he, there's nothing in the world that he regrets. I've done things that are wrong in 2009, specifically 10 years ago, and I believe in the Christian process of repentance and renewal and a chance for a second bite at life, and I've been granted that. I mean, in the wake of all that, folks at home sent me back to the United States Congress mm -hmm. to represent them in Washington, and so I won't make excuses for what I did wrong there. I mean, I did wrong, period, and there were real consequences in my life. But in the wake of that kind of public failure, you learn a level of empathy, you learn a level of humility, ultimately that makes you a better human being and a better leader, I believe, going forward. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you stopping by the station. Yes, ma'am. Short break. We'll be right back. Local 5 and CW Iowa 23 brought the experiences of the Iowa State Fair to you. They're like giant dogs. We also help birth animals. He's got a beautiful hello. See these stories now at weareiowa.com. Why rabbit? 50 new fair foods. Whoa, local 5 and CW Iowa 23. We are Iowa. Right now at Hot Spring Spas, save big. 60 months, 0% financing on High Life and Limelight Spas. And check out our saltwater hot tubs for a more natural soak. We also have spas starting at $49 a month. Feel good and live well at Hot Spring Spas. I know people love the Dish Remote. It's great. So why build in a Google Assistant? I mean, who really needs a TV remote that can turn the thermostat up? Change temperature to 72. The lights down. Dim the lights. And still access their DVR. Play real. Actually, some people could absolutely use a remote like that. The new Dish Voice Remote. Dish, tuned in to you. You telling me Iowa State is the top pick in the Big 12? Seriously? They don't belong here, man. They still need to prove it. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Now at Hot Spring Spas, save big. 60 months, 0% financing on High Life and Limelight Spas. And check out our saltwater hot tubs for a more natural soak. We also have spas starting at $49 a month. Feel good and live well at Hot Spring Spas. From the capital city, you're watching This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed. Getting to the heart of what's happening in Iowa politics. Welcome back, everyone. The Democratic primary in the U.S. Senate race in Iowa just got a little more crowded. Mike Franken is now in the race. I sat down with him and asked him the main reason why he's jumping in now. I would like to confront issues that I think are important to this state. I see that uh, Senator Ernst and Mitch McConnell have not done what I think they should be doing for Iowans and have uh, stripped health care uh, aspects and have uh, voted most or, or proposed restrictions to clean water protections recently. I would like to reverse some of these trends. My primary emphasis is to work on issues such as climate change, universal health care, uh, and to confront Wall Street greed for the betterment of Iowans. 
Franken hasn't been back in Iowa for a long time. He does have a long history in the military, though, and those jobs have taken him around the globe, moving dozens of times and living in dozens of countries. He says that's a perspective no one else brings. I saw the world from a grand perspective, and I bring that large perspective back to my service. And I've really learned the difference between good governance and marginally acceptable governance. And I would like to bring an element of good governance in everything I do as a senator for the state. As far as health care goes, he thinks we will eventually get to universal health care or Medicare for all. But to get there, we need to fix the Affordable Care Act and have a public and private option in our country. Stripping the Affordable Care Act was a mistake without anything there. I mean, that's jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. Senator Ernst should know, should know what that portends. Uh, you fix the Affordable Care Act. You never abolish anything. Well, the president's done this with his trade policies. Cancels trade agreements. And we're left with unfulfilled markets, with other entities fulfilling those markets. There isn't an easy path back. Similarly, with, uh, uh, to, to take away pre-existing uh, conditions with, one, what, 1.3 million Iowans? Why would you do such a thing? It's, it's not poor governance, it's almost cruel. Franken joins three other Democrats running to get Senator Joni Ernst's position. That primary will be in June 2020. We need to take a short break, but coming up next, it's another cattle call event where Iowa Democrats will get to hear from more than a dozen presidential candidates. We'll speak to the organizer of the Polk County Steak Fry and hear what we can expect next. It's not what we ride that defines us. It's what happens along the way. We may not know where the ride will take us, but one thing's for sure. With the Law Tigers, you never ride alone. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS. Iowa's motorcycle lawyers. There's plenty of work to finish this summer, and now's the time to upgrade your ride to get it done. That's why at Bob Brown Chevrolet, we have the Get Work Done deals for your life on four wheels. Take up to 25% off the 2019 Silverado 1500 Double Cab LT, and just announced, take up to 13,000 off in stock 2019 Silverado HD LTZ Crew Cabs while supplies last at Bob Brown Chevrolet in Irvindale or at BobBrownChevrolet.com. And we're just doing the stories that the community wants us to do, to empower you with something as a viewer that you can move forward with. What drives these people to go above and beyond and be exceptional Iowans? That's stuff we can all use in our own lives. To be able to be that line of connection for people is huge to them. And they can reach out to Local 5, and they're going to get answers. We are Iowa, and it's everything to me. Kim Zolciak Bierman and Croy Bierman love a good adventure. You should do it. It was one of the best experiences of my life. All the chaos of Don't Be Tardy and a trip back to where the magic began. You never return to the housewives. No. Andy Cohen does not have enough money for that. Then, American Ninja Warrior host Matt Eisman. The difficulty level's gone through the roof. It's a little spoiler. Goes on a delicate mission. Yes. I love that. Chef Manit Chauhan's Indian Street Food Experience. Monday morning at 9. On Local 5. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined now by Judy Downs, who is the executive director of the Polk County Democrats. Judy, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, we are getting ready for the steak fry. It's basically a cattle call event for Democratic Democrats in general, but Democratic presidential candidates yeah. when you are this close to an Iowa caucus, and it's quickly approaching. So uh, for our viewers who don't know, give us kind of a rundown of why this event is so important for candidates to attend. Partially because of its history. Senator Harkin ran the steak fry for decades, and it became a storied tradition in American politics. And it has 
previewed some of our leaders today. Mm -hmm. Obama spoke at the steak fry years before. Um, Hillary Clinton spoke at the steak fry before she was a candidate. So it's a nice introduction to Iowa for our candidates. Now this year it's a little bit different because we have so many candidates. And it's so important for them to make a showing, not only with their speech and with their presence, but also a show of force of volunteers and support. So talk to us a little bit about the feel. What happens at this event? Um, you even have some big name celebrities coming. We do. So this event is a lot different from your traditional political fundraiser. Right. <laughs> it's casual. It's at Waterworks Park, outdoors, a steak fry. It is a relaxed Iowa barbecue atmosphere, which is a great way to meet candidates where they're a little bit more comfortable and it, you don't have to be a high dollar donor to come. Tickets are only $35, so really anyone can be there. And with the amount and variety, I think, of candidates this year, we have tickets from 38 states, I think, so far, and different countries. So with all of this movement in the race, so as of this taping, how many candidates are coming? We'll have 17 as of today. Okay, so, but, I mean, we are getting, we now have passed the deadline for the uh, ABC debate in Houston, and so we could potentially see more candidates dropping out. What does that do for your event is you kind of have to have this fluidity. Absolutely. Well, the major campaigns who we know are still going to be there are the ones who we're working closely with to make sure that they've got enough space for their supporters and might be bussing people in. Some of the other campaigns, we know that there's a chance that they might drop out. We hope everyone stays till the se September 21st because we think it's a good opportunity for you to have a shining moment. And obviously, not all 17 candidates can become president, but as you mentioned, then Senator Barack Obama spoke at the Harkin Steak Fry, and now it gives these candidates another opportunity to kind of be on the national stage in Polk County. Absolutely. You know, I think that we not only will have our next president at the Steak Fry in a few weeks, but we're going to have more than one president at the Steak Fry. One of these candidates will run again and win. Okay, so do you think as a voter that these big cattle call events are beneficial to them? Oh, I think they're great. With... 17 people, you don't have to go to so many different events around mm -hmm. town, around the state. You can come to one event, pick a nice spot, be comfortable, and see everyone and make an informed decision and probably meet the candidates as well. And you can bring your kids. You can absolutely bring your kids. You can have a beer and just relax and see the candidates and talk about the issues that you're interested in in a really relaxed environment. Okay, now one of the late night talk show hosts is coming. Well, so we have... Potentially. Yes, potentially. We have The Daily Show. Uh -huh. Um, interested. The media interested has been fantastic. You know, sometimes I think Iowans take this for granted, take caucus season for granted, but it's really a spectacle across the world. We have representation for most major European nations. We even have a member of German, German Parliament coming just to see. Seriously? Yes. Oh my so gosh. So we're really excited and we're honored, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a really humbling experience to have the Swiss Embassy call you up and say, we want to send someone to the steak fry because we really want to see what this Iowa caucuses thing is all about. Good old Polk County, Iowa. Yeah, it's a really special place it at is. a special time. Uh, Judy, well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And good luck. You are uh, in crunch time now. Yes, we are. Thank you for having <laughs> me. Short break, everyone. We'll be right back. If you come to Burlington just to buy a coat, here's what you're missing. Great fitting jeans. Tons of boots. My favorite brands. So much for the home. Makeup. The latest fashions. I love the brands. I love the savings. Hello, Burlington. Bye bye, Coat Factory. Let's play. From the outlaws. I think we know how this is going to go. To the warriors. Nobody can dispute the right of what we're doing. And every heart pound, smoke and barrel, hot pursuit. And powerhouse punch in between. Sometimes you gotta go for it. And the up and kick in like men. Like men! It all is. He ain't seen bad yet. On Grit Television with Backbone. It takes years of hard work to reach an elite level. Every day, practicing and honing skills in every challenge, staying focused on the goal. For Local 5, it's being the best at telling local stories that matter to you. We're honored to celebrate student-athletes on and off of the field. We're excited for what's to come in the 20th year of Friday Night Blitz here on Local 5. We are Iowa Sports. 
Kansas anymore. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? You represent the lollipop guild? You have no power here. Now be gone before someone drops a house on you. Follow the yellow brick road. Oh, I don't care. Because, 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 because. Oh, I don't care. I'll get him for this. And his little dog, too. There is no place like home. And for great TV, there's no place like Cozy TV. If you come to Burlington just to buy a coat, here's what you're missing. Great fitting jeans. Tons of boots. My favorite brands. So much for the home. Makeup. The latest fashions. I love the brands. I love the savings. Hello, Burlington. Bye-bye, Coat Factory. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back, everyone. Iowa leaders continue to push back against ethanol waivers. The Trump administration allowed 31 refineries to not blend ethanol with gasoline this year, even though a federal law requires it. Farmers in Iowa say they'll be taking a big hit if these waivers keep going out because Iowa is the top ethanol producing state. Our own Rachel Droz has reaction from Iowa farmers. Farmers want the Trump administration to stop granting these waivers so their bottom lines don't take a hit, and the governor is calling for action, too. Iowa farmers are frustrated. It's reached a boiling point for farmers. They're really upset about this. Craig Hill, a farmer in Warren County, is also the president of the Iowa Farm Bureau. Hill says the ethanol waivers granted by the Trump administration, combined with the trade war and bad weather, will really take a toll on Iowa farmers this year. Uh, upon all the other problems that we have, we have to deal with this as well. In 2018, the U.S. produced 16 billion gallons of ethanol, and more than a quarter of that was made right here in Iowa. Well, Iowa is the number one corn state in America. We're the number one ethanol state in America. Since Trump took office, there's been a roughly four billion gallon reduction in ethanol use. For the first time in 21 years, we actually will see a reduction this year in the consumption of ethanol, largely based upon these exemptions or waivers that have been granted by EPA. The Environmental Protection Agency has a mission to protect human health and the environment, in part by ensuring Americans have clean air. So farmers are confused by the EPA's actions, since ethanol blends burn cleaner than gasoline alone. You would think with the mission of EPA, uh, that they would want to utilize fully uh, the opportunities that ethanol provides for clean air. Governor Kim Reynolds is also speaking out against the EPA waivers. This does not help what we're trying to do in Iowa. Reynolds says she agrees with a lot of what the president does, but doesn't think these waivers were a good idea. Not a favor in socialism, so I, I prefer, you know, uh, the policies that he's put in place and so but it doesn't mean I don't there's not going to be areas that I disagree. Since Trump took office the EPA has quadrupled the number of waivers granted to refineries. They've approved 85 waivers since 2016 allowing refineries to not blend ethanol with gasoline. Reporting in the newsroom Rachel Droz Local 5 News we are Iowa. Rachel, thank you very much. Governor Reynolds says at least one ethanol plant in Iowa has already shut down. She says she has calls set up with the Trump administration to talk about what's happening with the ethanol industry. Now, Iowa leaders want action on a major trade deal. Of course, we're talking about the USMCA or the U.S. Mexico-Canada trade agreements. Congress still has not passed the trade deal that would bring new jobs to Iowa and more money to Iowa farmers and workers. Senator Chuck Grassley and former USDA Secretary Tom Vilsack held a press conference Monday urging national leaders to get this agreement on the president's desk. It's an opportunity to get more poultry products, particularly into Canada, and there's an opportunity to get uh, higher quality wheat into Canada than we have under the NAFTA agreement. Uh, so I think it's important uh, that people understand this is about farm income, it's about jobs, it's about improving opportunity for our farmers, uh, improving job opportunities and supporting job opportunities like the ones here. The agreement is supposed to create a more balanced trade that supports high-paying jobs for Americans and grows the North American economy as a whole. Congress is not in session this month, though. Now, speaking of Congress, Congresswoman Cindy Axney was on the Drake University campus this week. She hosted a town hall focusing on immigration and health care in rural areas. On the latter, she says she's seeing the same happen to pharmacists as is happening to rural doctors. A shortage in the workforce and a lack of viable alternatives. I'm visiting drugstores that are out of business now. I'm in towns where they don't even have any pharmacists on, uh, 
uh, available anymore because they can't afford to do business. Anything that's out there from a policy perspective that's keeping us from lowering the cost of prescription drugs is taken off the books. Congresswoman Axney says she's been working to lower the cost of prescription drugs. Well, four women known for their advocacy and passion for helping others have been inducted into the Iowa Women's Hall of Fame. Local 5 got a special interview with one of these inductees. This is Ione Genevieve Shaduck. She served on an Iowa Civil Rights Commission and founded the Iowa Women's Political Caucus. Ione's was one, uh, was also a driving force in creating Drake University's Women's Athletics Program. It was my dream to change physical education in a way to make it more academic rather than just exercising games. It meant so much more to me than that. There were other accomplished women on the list as well. You can find the full interview with Ione on our website, weareiowa.com, as well as see who else was inducted. Turning to presidential politics, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is a Democrat from New York, and she's now out of the presidential race. She made the announcement on social media on Wednesday. She said she couldn't see a path to the nomination. Gillibrand did not meet the requirements to be on the third debate stage in Houston. We'll take a quick break. You're watching This Week in Iowa. Right now at Hot Spring Spas, save big. 60 months, 0% financing on High Life and Limelight Spas. And check out our saltwater hot tubs for a more natural soak. We also have spas starting at $49 a month. Feel good and live well at Hot Spring Spas. How do you win over fans? You give them something they love. Something no one else can. Something they can't get enough of. And then you give them more. Hurry in for an additional $500 bonus cash on Ram 1500 during the Ram Labor Day sales event. Or get 20% off MSRP on select 2019 Ram 1500 Classic models in dealer stock. Can Christians just live however they want? If the Bible says that God's love for us is unconditional, that he accepts us just because of Jesus, can Christians behave in any way they want? Or is our love from God and our place in heaven based on how we live? That's a really good question. It's a tension that every person has to wrestle with, and that's exactly what we're going to do here on this station on Time of Grace. Best part about football? The highlights. So Dish gives you NFL Red Zone, no extra charge. That's every touchdown from every game Sunday afternoons. We'll go right here. Come on. Because we know if you miss that action, you miss all this action. And that would be an awful shame. Dish with NFL Red Zone at no extra charge. Tuned in to you. Right now at Hot Spring Spas, save big. 60 months, 0% financing on High Life and Limelight Spas. And check out our saltwater hot tubs for a more natural soak. We also have spas starting at $49 a month. Feel good and live well at Hot Spring Spas. Thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your holiday weekend. And we hope to see you again next Sunday.